A planer and a joiner are two of the most valuable tools you can have for ensuring that your material is flat and square. But if you're like us, you may not have one in your shop. This is Pat with I2R CNC, and today we'll be talking about how to use your CNC as a planer and a joiner. Although this process isn't as fast as a planer and a joiner, it's a great option for a shop that doesn't have either of those, but still wants to know that their surfaces and sides are flush and straight. Once you get the toolpaths together and a jig on your machine, the repeatable cutting process is quick and easy. We're surfacing and squaring this material so that we can make an end grain cutting board with our CNC, so if that or any other CNC related projects interest you, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down there and even hit the bell if you're so inclined. Also, let us know in the comments what CNC content you want to see, or if you've done this process a little differently before, we always love hearing insights from the community. First, we're going to plane the two surfaces of the material. This is one of the easiest toolpaths you can make. Once you have your dimensions and settings set up in VCarve, just create a rectangle around the perimeter of the cut. Next, create a pocket toolpath with your vector. Set your cut depth to around 0.01 inches. If your material looks warped and extremely uneven, you may want to set it a bit deeper. Select a surfacing bit for your tool. If you don't have that, then a flathead end mill will also work. It'll just take longer to cover the surface, but you can handle a deeper pass depth. Check the box that includes a profile pass and select whether you want it first or last. This just cleans up the edges of your cut. Include a pocket allowance of minus 0.25 inches. This way the bit will extend just beyond the material border so that the round bit can cover the corner. Give your toolpath a suitable name and click calculate. Make sure to preview your toolpath just to make sure all of your surface is covered. If something looks off, check to make sure your offset is a proper amount for your material size and your bit dimension. Once that's squared away, save your toolpath to your computer and head over to the machine. Best practice for this cut is to make sure you have a surface machine bed. If you haven't done that yet, we have a tutorial video on how to do that which will be linked below. For this cut, hold down methods can get a little tricky. If you have excess material that you plan to trim off later that the bit won't come in contact with, you can use hold down clamps on those sections. Otherwise, you can't have any obstruction on your surface. A couple options would be either double sided tape, which can sometimes be risky if not done correctly, or linear clamps with side compression. I'm using the linear clamp method, and if you don't have a set of these, there are great resources online for making your own right angle jig for your CNC. It's a great feature to have. Make sure your fences are parallel to the axis of the machine by running the spindle along either axis and lining up your fence. Once it's squared away, secure your material to the machine bed. For the first side you surface, you will most likely have wobble due to the opposite side not sitting flat on the machine bed. In order to ensure a clean surface on your top side, you need to add some kind of shim to the bottom of your wood until there's no wobble when you press on any of the corners. Set up your axis reference points, load up your toolpath, install your bit, and do a quick border check to confirm your X and Y zero points, and to make sure your bit is clear of any obstructions. Lastly, dust collection is highly recommended for any surfacing job, so make sure you have something before starting the cut. Once everything is squared away, run your toolpath. While monitoring your cut, you may notice that the bit is going a little slow or you think it can handle a bit more. In that case, you can increase the feed rate on UCCNC, which not only will save you time, but can also prevent surface burn from friction. Once the toolpath is finished, check the surface of your material and make sure that all parts of it were cut. Typically, you'll be able to tell just by how the grain looks, but if you want to be extra sure, I recommend covering your material with pencil or chalk marks before running the cut. That will show you exactly which parts were and weren't cut. If you have any parts that weren't surfaced, reset your Z0 position and run the toolpath again. After that side is done, just flip over the material and you should be able to run the same toolpath again with almost no tweaking to your setup. The main difference is this time you won't need shims and you have to remember to reset your Z0 position. Before running the toolpath, just do a border check to make sure that the whole surface will be covered, then repeat what you did for the opposite side. After that side is surfaced, you should have a perfectly leveled piece of material. Plus, you can see the grain of whatever wood you're working with, which is always pretty great. Next step is straightening and squaring the sides. So for this, you need a different toolpath, but it's even simpler than the last one. 
Open your v-carve project again and just draw a line down the middle of your longest axis. Extend it slightly to make sure your bit will clear the dimension of your material. In my case, it's the y-axis, but you may have oriented your material differently. Next, create a profile toolpath along your vector. Set the cut depth to the same amount as your material thickness. Choose on the line and select an end mill as your tool. Keep in mind that your tool will have to clear the height of the board, so choose a bit that you know is going to be long enough. Export that toolpath and load it into UCCNC. Put the correct bit in your spindle and make sure your board is oriented so that the first side you're going to cut is exposed. Use your right angle fence to ensure the board is aligned. This time you can hold down the material with clamps so long as there are none on the side you are cutting. Then jog your spindle so that your bit is a little less than halfway over the edge of your material. Jog it along the edge of your board to make sure it will come in contact with every part of the side. Set that as your new zero point, y axis if you're cutting forward to back, x axis if you're cutting side to side. Do a border check to make sure your other axis center point is still aligned to the proper length of the board. Then set your Z0 position before pressing cycle start. Your choice for this part if you want to use dust collection. Health and safety wise it's still recommended, but these types of cuts always look pretty cool. But we'll film it for your enjoyment so you can machine safely. Once you have one side cut, it's a rinse and repeat process for the rest of your edges. You can now use the straight edge and flush it against your fence to ensure parallel and perpendicular cuts depending on how you're orienting it. After you cut all the sides you want, you're all set with a perfectly flat and squared board. This kind of precision is invaluable for many types of woodworking projects and it's something you can only achieve with a planer and a joiner or your CNC. While a CNC isn't going to be replacing planers and joiners anytime soon for this particular function, it's good to know that they can step in if you don't have a planer and joiner or if yours is out of commission for some reason. We hope this video brought you some valuable info that you can use in the future, and we hope you have great success with your upcoming projects. This is Pat with I2R CNC. Have a great day.